What's up everyone, Dapblade here with 10 beginner tips to Maneater. Maneater, the wondrously comic and over the top shark game, has made waves with various players out there. And with this video I hope to bring you 10 tips to help new players to the game or help players who are considering getting the game make that decision. So in no particular order, the first tip I can give you is projectiles and AoEs can be used to get hard to reach collectibles and more. Some of the collectibles in the game, such as license plates and chests, are in hard to reach places. Now you can of course get these once you've leveled up enough and got to the end game, but there is a way around this. Should you be using certain evolutions or pieces of equipment, such as the bioelectric fins or tail, then you're able to project an AOE blast around you or even a forward arcing projectile that can hit these collectibles and you can get them that way. Knowing this can definitely help, especially when you're going for 100% completion. The next tip I can give players is grabbing and thrashing. In Maneater, one of the easiest ways to deal out damage is to grab a monster in your mouth and perform the iconic thrash movement that real life sharks do. This allows you to deal uninterrupted damage to whatever you have in your jaws. But to do this successfully, you also have to keep an eye on your mass. Mass is a stat that is found on the status screen and it basically indicates your size. The more mass you have, the more creatures you can thrash about. Be aware though, this can also work in reverse, as if you have a very small mass and you go up against a larger creature, they can also grab you and thrash you around. The next tip I can give players is that when it comes to the tail swipe or whiplash, you can actually slow down time. Now in Maneater, you're able to grab certain prey, humans, other sea creatures, and then while holding them in your mouth, you're able to combo into the tail swipe and perform a whiplash attack, sending that creature, hurting it in a way, into other objects and such. But there's a way that you can use this even more effectively by slowing down time. When you hold the tail swipe button with a opponent in your mouth, it will actually slow down time so long as you're holding the button. This allows you to aim a little bit more accurately and then whiplash your prey into another target. Great for taking on shark hunters or other apex predators out there. The next tip I can give you is that you can stun sea creatures with other sea creatures. This is something I learned when taking on the first apex alligator in the game. Now normally when you're fighting an apex creature or other large sea creature, they're normally accompanied by smaller sea creatures as well. Now these smaller creatures, as they are generally smaller than you as well, are able to be grabbed and thrashed around. This of course can be comboed into the tail whip to perform the whiplash and you can send the smaller creatures into the bigger creature or the apex and it ends up stunning both creatures leaving them open for you to attack. Knowing this definitely helps when taking on some of the bosses in the game. Next up is something new players may be wondering which is what levels equal what age. Now in Maneater you level up as you do in most RPGs but certain levels once you reach them allow the shark to grow in age. At level 1 you start off as a pup or baby shark, once you reach level 5 you become a teen, at level 10 an adult, at level 20 an elder shark and then at level 30 which is the final level you become a mega. Now I don't know if this is hinting at becoming a megalodon as it's not specifically said but it could be hinted. To allow your shark to grow up all you have to do is go back to your grotto once you reach the associated levels. The next tip I can give players is to use the various evolution sets in the game. This is Maneater's version of item sets or gear sets. Basically there are three of them at the time of this video. First of all is the shadow set which specializes in speed and poison attacks. You have the bioelectricity evolution that deals in damage and being able to stun your prey. And then you have the bone set which focuses on survival and dealing damage to boats. When you're in a tough quest, switching sets can sometimes make things easier so that's something to be aware of. To equip the different evolutions or gear, all you have to do is go back to your grotto where you'll be able to customise your shark there. The next tip I can give players is to don't be scared to leave something till later. Now this applies to all RPGs out there. Most RPGs have enemies and opponents that have a certain level next to their name indicating their difficulty compared to the player. 
and this is no different in Maneater. In the starting zone, for example, there is often times where you're simply level 2 or 3 and you come up against a level 8 alligator. When this is the case, it's better to go away, level up some more and come back later. Doing this can definitely make the game's progress feel a little bit more easy. Next up, some new players may be wondering, is when the story ends, do you get access to free roam or to continue doing other miscellaneous quests and collectibles? And the answer is yes. Basically, when the main story of Maneater ends, then you get to swim around and complete and finish off all the other missions and collectibles you didn't finish before finishing the story. The next tip I can give players is to prioritize certain quests. Now there is a whole host and different variety of quests in the game, from kill a certain amount of humans, consume a certain amount of prey, collect a certain amount of collectibles and so on and so forth but there are three in particular that I found best to prioritize over anything else these include the culling quest which are then followed by the apex quest this normally has you taking on a boss monster in whatever zone you're on doing these will grant you certain pieces of the bone evolution armor set the other quests you may want to consider prioritizing are the landmarks these are collectibles scattered around the various areas of Port Clovis Smashing all of these in a certain area will grant you various parts of the Shadow Evolution set. And then finally, raising your Infamy rank and then defeating the 10 Shark Hunters in the game is advisable as it gives you various pieces of the Bioelectricity Evolution set. These sets combined will definitely make the story missions a lot more easier, so it's something to be aware of. And then finally, the last tip I can give players is that the different Evolution sets require different materials to level up. Much like any RPG out there, the various pieces of gear you get can be leveled up. And this is done via the materials you get from consuming other animals. There are four materials in the game that you have to be aware of. Red, which is protein, yellow, which is fat, blue, which is minerals, and green, which is classed as mutagen, which is pretty much radioactive materials. Anyway, each evolution set focuses on one of these, bar the green mutagen, which they all use at a certain point. The shadow set focuses on red or protein, the bioelectric set focuses on fat and the bone set focuses on minerals. So if you prefer a certain set over the others, you may want to focus on farming the materials related to that said set. But there we have it. Those are 10 quick beginner tips that I can give you for Maneater. If there's anything I missed or you would like to add and share with new players out there, please by all means leave a comment down below. And hopefully this has inspired players who haven't picked up the game yet to do so. So until next time, I've been Dartplayed, bringing you 10 quick tips to Maneater. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.